Factors to consider when choosing office equipment. Hmm, this is so delicious. Your cafeteria makes very good food. We pay them handsomely, so they have no choice. Anyway, let's wrap up this talk on office equipment, shall we? Yes, you are talking about how to choose the best equipment. That's right. I want to combine this with benefits of using machines, challenges of using machines, as well as office furniture. That's a lot of combination up there. Don't you worry. Each one of them is sharp. So, I will be done by the time you are done eating. Okay. Now, what do you think should be considered when buying an office equipment? I would definitely consider the price. Hmm. You sound like a business person already. Don't just consider the cost of buying the equipment, but also consider the cost of maintaining it. I have also learned mm. that not all equipment is found in every office. Mm -hmm. What is found depends on the activities that go on in that particular office. Good observation, and that is very true. The nature of work that is conducted in an office will determine the equipment that will be bought. Like your office does not have a counting machine because you do not deal with large sums of money to be counted. Correct. The size of the business matters as well. Bigger businesses usually have more resources and so can have bigger machines. That is one way of putting it. What's the other way? Well, bigger businesses have more space, therefore can purchase bigger machines while smaller offices have smaller spaces. Thank you. Now, what can you say about the staff? Nothing. Really? My parrot-like daughter has nothing to say? Nope. Oh, I was just joking. Of course, I would consider who I am going to give the machine to. Mm -hmm. Do they have any experience with the machine? If not, what am I supposed to do to ensure that they can run the machine effectively? Hmm. See? You really are my parrot daughter. <laughs> Always talking. And to answer your question, the staff would have to be trained if they do not have the necessary experience. Mm. If that is not possible, then I'm afraid the business might have to do a changeover. A changeover? Mm-hmm. Hiring new employees altogether. This might cost a little more. Noted. Also, do consider the nature of the machine. What about it? Look at things like how long it can last. Durability, yes. Yes. Also, consider how safe it is to use this particular machine. Oh, I don't want to buy equipment that will cause accidents in the office. That's right. You also don't want to be stuck with an equipment that will become obsolete in future. In English, please. I am talking about the ability of the machine to cope up with the future changes. Adaptability of the machine, you mean? Right. I think the room where the equipment will be kept should also be considered. Why? If the room is small and you buy large printers and computers and photocopiers, for example, mm. don't you think that there will be no more space for the staff? I think you're right. Please also do consider complementary resources for the machine. Meaning? These are simply the resources required to operate the machine. Such as? Electricity, for instance. Ah. If you had a machine that requires electricity to run, then you'd have it installed before buying the machine. Understood. Consider spare parts for the machine as well. That is very important. We don't want to have a machine that cannot be fixed when it is broken. And last but not least, consider the security for your equipment. I was wondering when you were going to say that. Security is very important. Otherwise, they can be stolen every other day. Mm -hmm. So having known all about office equipment, mm -hmm. Do you think that they help in any way? Are you asking me for the advantages of these machines? Yes, call them advantages, benefits, whatever name you want to give them. Machines do improve the quality of goods, mm. so I believe that the goods will be of high quality. <clears throat> That's correct. Equipment also brings efficiency at work, which leads to customer satisfaction. You have not said that machines work faster than human beings. Hmm. You already said that, but I wasn't finished yet. And that is true, and this leads to a lot of time being saved. I also like the fact that machines are accurate. Well, only when the data keyed into the system is correct. Machines also reduce cheating at work. Cheating? How? Well, when humans produce figures manually, they may add or subtract to their advantage. But many machines are programmed to show all activities that have been performed in them. This way, there is no issue of cheating. Marvelous. Any example? Yes. 
If you photocopy anything in a photocopying machine, mm -hmm. it takes note of the number of copies produced if it was programmed to do so. That way, the copies made by the end of the day can be determined. Wow! Mm -hmm. And eventually, wastage and misappropriation of resources in the office are reduced. Now, any challenges that come to your mind? Well, if I was among the staff and I was given a printer to operate, and yet I don't know how to do so, that would be really frustrating to me. Agreed. The cost for purchasing and maintaining these machines are also relatively high. Which may lead to extra costs every time they are to be maintained. Mm -hmm. Some machines only work where there is power, you see? Mm -hmm. And so, when there is power failure, they simply cannot work. Which makes them unreliable in such a case or even if there is a breakdown. True. Again, a lot of use of machines means fewer employees, so in some way, they cause unemployment. Oh no, that is so bad. Mm -hmm. Now, and this may lead to social problems such as crime, because when people are idle, they come up with the craziest of ideas. Finally, when new technology is introduced, what happens to the old ones? There is a term you used. Uh, what was it again? Oh yes, obsolete. That's right. Shall we move on to office furniture? No objection, sir. We have three types of office furniture depending on the purpose. Mm -hmm. The first group is furniture for office use. Now these include chairs, tables, desks, stools, the staff sit on and work on. Yes. Then we have furniture for keeping records. The cabinets, trays or boxes. Correct. Lastly are the furniture for storing important documents such as safes, cabinets and cupboards. Again, there are factors to consider before you buy this furniture. Let me run you through this. Mm -hmm. First, you have to consider the space available. A smaller space will mean smaller furniture, bigger space meaning bigger furniture. Tick. The furniture should definitely be affordable and should be durable. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the business will have to replace it a little too soon. Yes. I think those staff members who have to work while seated the whole day should also be given comfortable chairs. That's true, to avoid issues of back aches and neck pains. A furniture should also be able to adapt to changes in the office or even if it was to be moved from one place to another. Correct. And lastly, the furniture should serve the specific needs of the organization. Would you like some dessert? Uh, no, I'm so full. I love this joint. The food is excellent. Great. Then we can head back to the office. Actually, I think I will just head home. I'm going to play netball with my friends. Okay. We can continue this discussion whenever you want. Sure, Dad. Have a nice afternoon in the office. Bye. Bye.